A lot of students ask me about uh, one of the most common questions I get is, how do you size a workbench? And in the uh, by hand and eye world that uh, I'm working in right now, uh, the workbench uh, is not sized to a dimension, it's sized directly to my body, which makes sense because it's my body using this workbench. So this is a Rubeau style workbench and it is set up primarily at the height that's most comfortable for me to be planing wood at. Uh, it's an extremely uh, sturdy bench, obviously. It doesn't, doesn't move, very rigid, but it is, you might be able to already see this, it is lower than most workbenches. The common workbench is a bit higher than this. This is unusually low, but it's low because it's used primarily for planing. I do sometimes chop mortises out of this area, and that's also a good height for chopping mortises. But let's talk about how the height relates to my body. So, the most comfortable way for me to be planing when I'm holding a large plane like this is I want my shoulders to be relaxed. I don't want to be holding a plane up here. That just takes up more energy, and I'm involving muscles trying to deal with the plane, keeping it up at that level. So I want to relax, have it right down here, and you notice when I'm relaxed with my shoulders, the plane is actually right at the height where it would be planing a piece of wood. And that happens to be, because of the way we humans are made, with our shoulders relaxed, with our arms hanging down, it's right about at wrist level, which is right about half of our body height. Well, half of our body height is four hand spans eight total. So this workbench is sized to half my body height. If I wanted to use this as a module, it would be four of these. You can basically one, two, three, four, brings it right to the top of the wood. So I have uh, four modules that way. Next question is how deep should the workbench be? Well, very rarely will I be working at a workbench where I'll be reaching more than my arm span. So if I stand here with my arm out, you can see that I, unless I'm hunched over like this, which I normally don't want to be, workbench rarely has to be longer than an arm. Well, an arm is three hand spans. One, two, three. So, one, two, three. So I have a four to three relationship of height to depth. In terms of the length of the bench, that's somewhat dependent on the kind of work that I do. Uh, the most uh, largest piece of uh, wood that I would be working on a bench of this size would be something like a door, and a door, a door style, typically. It would be about the longest piece of wood I'd ever have on this bench for the kind of work I do. Uh, and you might already guess what a door style length has to be, which is the height of a person, plus one hand span. So this bench is nine of these long. I just walk out nine hand spans. So now I have, it's four high by nine long, a four to nine ratio. Or it's also a three to nine, one to three ratio. So, the only measurement that you actually need to know is what your hand span is. And uh, if you're building this for a larger person with larger hands, this whole thing is going to be geometrically ratioed a little bit larger. But the ratios will all stay the same. So let's walk over to my other bench, because this bench is not what I usually do sawing on. Where I do all my precision sawing is on this bench. And I'm sure you can see already that it's uh, a bit higher. And by a bit higher, it's this much higher. Uh, because typically I'm working at this bench with a little shooting board with the wood. And here's my saw that I'm working at. And you'll notice that this comes out right about navel height. The height of the navel is five of these. So this bench is five modules high. And again, it's just an arm's length deep, so it's a three to five ratio. And one of the things that I like about this height is 
when I'm sawing, you can probably notice that my wrist isn't rotating. If this was lower than here, there's a little bit of movement in my wrist, which I really don't want. There's another moving part. I'd like to eliminate moving parts when I'm trying to saw to precision. So here, it's just a straight back and forth movement, a lot of precision. Now I have one other vise on this bench, and that's this one up here. And this is where I do my fine detail work, right in here. And I like this height because I don't have to hunch over to see what I'm doing. And it also, for chisel work, it means I can just use the momentum of my body, the mass of my body to power the chisels. I have a tremendous amount of control, and that out in free space or down here trying to do this, I'm just doing this. Lots and lots of control. Again, I can see where, it's, where it is. And this is one more hand span above the bench. So this is six hand spans from the floor. And uh, that is the story about how I configure these benches to work with my particular body uh, proportions. Thanks for listening and watching.